healing, salvation, and happiness. It's your season. It's your time. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. We want to share with you, yeah, and your family, family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in the streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives with oh, one touch in the streets. So if you look at everything that's happening in the world today, 
If you cut on the TV, you see stuff that's going on, and actually you go on social media and everywhere else, you just see stuff that's happening on social media. It can actually bring you down. It can make you say, you know what, I just want to give up this life and just go. Uh, and God is saying to you on today, no, it's not your time to go. It's time for you to propel into the future that he has uh, given unto you. So many things are happening in the world. Um, and let's just look in the case of just this morning. I just took the liberty this morning to say, all right, let's, let's, let's see what's happening in the news today. And so I turned on uh, the television. I went through, scrolled through some things online. And I saw that this morning in Montana that an Amtrak train was derailed. Wow. Three people were killed and many were injured. God knows the plans that he has for you. Not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future and expected end. Something else happened. It says gunshots fired in Philadelphia. Oh, now we're getting closer to home. And last night, one man was killed. God is protecting us in this time, in this season. Shooting at an Alabama high school football game. Oh my goodness, what is going on? The, these things will make you think, God, what is going on? You would think because of things happening with COVID and everything else that people try to, you know, keep the peace, if you will. I feel like Rodney King, can we all just get along? <laughs> I saw that in, 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 there's a typhoon forming near the coast of Japan. And they said this may be a mega typhoon. Uh, who knows? It might wipe out the whole country. We serve still an awesome God. Four teenagers, I saw this morning, this right here tripped me out. Four teenagers were plotting to do an attack, another shooting, at, at the Columbine shooting. Four teenagers arrested. What is going on in our world? 11 people get charged uh, in, in, a, in a Virginia college. Now, 11 people get in charge in a Virginia college for a death of a student. You know, because they do the hazing and stuff like that. It's supposed to be, you know, fun games. You're getting kind of like initiated into, you know, Kappa Gamma, this other kind of stuff. But they went too far. 11 people being charged. But today I stand here on the fourth Sunday of September uh, and you're listening to me right now, a preacher telling you that God has a plan for you and right now it's going to be bigger, that plan is brighter, that plan is better and if you believe God and what he's saying for you on today, I dare you right now just to shout oh yes! All right, I'm so glad that you guys are with me. So let me get back to my scripture really quick. It says here, uh, the next day, the King James Version of the Bible says on the third day. Let me just expound on that just really quick. On the third day, signs, miracles, and wonders happening. On the third day, that's when Jesus, when he rose up from out of the grave, and he said, uh, death and hell, I have the keys to the kingdom, and whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Special things happen on the third day. I know that sometimes they say bad things happen in threes, but I'm changing your mindset to tell you, let you know that three days, things are going to change and turn around for you. And the next day, there was a wedding celebration uh, in the village of Canaan in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. So we got Jesus' mother, and then we have uh, Jesus and his disciples, and then uh, they were all invited to the celebration. And the Bible says in verse 3 that the wine supply ran out during the festivities. So let me stop you right there. So, when we do weddings, you know, we celebrate. Hey, I have my wedding right here in this church. We had a celebration here. 
It probably, I think it started like an hour, hour and a half late because somebody that shall remain nameless, my mother-in-law, was late. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but then we had a celebration, we had a repast at a different location. And so, you know, so, all right, so let's, let me just help you just imagine this really quick. So today, you got to do, use a little bit, little bit of imagination with me. Uh, most weddings, I'll just say, let's start at 1 o'clock again. You know, hey, uh, the wedding may start late. So let's say 11, 11.30. This wedding is going to start. We're going to celebrate. We're going to have fun, whatever the wedding party is going to do. Let's just say, oh, about 30 minutes to an hour. Usually, a wedding will last the actual wedding celebration part of it, them exchanging vows and everything else. All right, 12.30 comes around. Hey, congratulations. You're throwing the rice, they're drunk the broom, they're doing all that stuff, they're walking out the door, getting ready to go down to the party. Uh, we get down to the party. Hmm, let's just say it's a, it's a close nearby venue. Um, so we get there probably about 1 o'clock. You know, people, guests are starting to arrive, arrive 1 o'clock. You know, the, the wedding, the bride, the groom, they're probably here still taking pictures, blah, blah, blah. So they'll probably get there about 1.30, 2 o'clock. All right, cool. So now we party, we jamming, we eating. So by the time, all right, 7, 8 o'clock roll around, hey, party's done. It's time to go home. All right, well, it's a late wedding. Not a problem. By 10, 11, 12 o'clock, we done. That's it. You ain't got to go home, <laughs> but you got to get about here. <laughs> but... Understanding Jewish traditions that parties and celebrations like this lasted three to five days. Mm. Whoa. A three to, and I ain't talking about, oh, we stopping at 12 o'clock, y'all come back the next day. No, this is continuing three to five days. Y'all partying, y'all jamming, now all of a sudden, yo, we ran out of wine. Whoa. <laughs> exactly, whoa. <laughs> Even, so by this time, folks probably tore up from the floor, but they lit. They like, yeah, we go. So uh, and mind you, Jesus and the disciples, they at this party. They're like, oh, okay. And so uh, Mary runs up to uh, Jesus and says, they ain't got no more wine. <laughs> Jesus said, uh, now my problem. And, and, and I understand Jesus' response. <laughs> but the simple fact is that I didn't have people come and tell me there's an issue going on. I'm like, not my problem. My, listen, my, my four match words, not my problem. Three match words, not my problem. I ain't handling it. That, that, I, matter of fact, I, I'm just a guest. What, 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 what I got to do? They better go tell somebody else, go down to the uh, to, to the Kroger, go down to the, to, the, to the wine store, go get some more liquor for the party. Nobody tell y'all to celebrate for the past week. <laughs> Celebration is going on. And so, uh, something interesting happened here. And, and the reason why he said it's not my problem because, mind you, during this time, Jesus had not been, uh, 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 been revealed to the public yet. You know, he had just got baptized by John, this, that. So, you know, at this time, John had just really just announced, hey, behold, the lamb that was slain. The lamb that will take away the sins of the world. He had just made that announcement. And then John and Jesus, they was like, I need to be baptized you. You know, I need to baptize you. No, you need to baptize me. They going back and forth. So I was like, yo, baptize me, baptize me, baptize me. And Jesus probably said, yo, bro. I really need you to baptize me because my hour has not yet come. I need to be baptized. So Jesus waited until he's about 30 years old to get baptized. So just in case you think it's too late for you to be baptized, it's not too late for you to be baptized. So understanding this, I understand that, hey, yo, my, my, my public ministry is not supposed to happen just as of yet. But Mary did something. She was like, ha, 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 okay. Hey, yo, yo, hey, hey you, come on, come in, come on. No, no, yeah, that, that, that's right, follow me, come in, come in, come in. We ran out of wine. This man right here, his name Jesus. Uh huh, that's my son. All right, listen, this is what I'm gonna do. Whatever he tell y'all to do, you gonna do it. And so in my mind, um, you know, the, the Bible says to, you know, honor 
your mother and your father. So I believe this was just really just Jesus honoring Mary being his uh, earthly mother. And so this helped. So hopefully I'm not getting ahead of myself. But all right, so. No, I'll say that for later. Let me say this first. So he said, whatever you say to do, do it. Um, standing by, there were six stone water jugs. Stone. Stone. Stone water jugs. It says here uh, that it was used for Jewish ceremonial washing. So, you know, hey, all right, they, this is what we use to bathe in. Right here. Stone. Right here. And so he said, uh, Jesus said, you look at the pot, said, go fill that up with some water. So I'm going to help uh, illustrate this really quick. This is my empty jug right here. And so it says here that six, stood by were six stone water jugs used for Jewish ceremony. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Mm -hmm. 20. Now this right here is 5 gallons right here. You can take something. This right here, this is heavy. 5 gallons of water. It said each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. And Jesus told the service, he said, all right, all right, bro, all right, listen. Fill that up with some water. He said it was six of them. Stone. Not, not this light stuff. This is plastic. Stone. Uh, and when the jars are filled, uh, so they said fill the jars up with water. All right, so we got the six people, got the six men. Now, again, y'all imagine it with me, right? Y'all imagine with me? Just so imagine this is like a big, big hole at the top right here. So, in our 21st century thinking, we think, oh, okay, let's go fill up the water jugs. No problem. All right, here we go. Just go, go to my water faucet. Go to, uh-huh, hook it up. Just mm, 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 mm. fill it up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill it up. Mm, fill it up. Uh, this is over 2,000 years ago. They ain't no, they ain't got no plumbing system. They ain't no water faucet. They ain't no sink. Fill up no water jugs in. <coughs> so y'all match with me. Y'all match with me here. Okay, let's, let's go fill up these water jugs. They pick up the water jugs. Who is this dude, Jesus? I don't know who this guy is. Oh boy, I, I ain't never done such stuff in my life. And why, why, wait, don't you know that this is what they, they, they wash. They wash with this stuff right here. Uh -huh. Oh, I forgot to say this. <laughs> uh, remember, there, there's no water system. They had to go to the nearest stream, the nearest, the nearest river or whatever to go fill this up. So now you got 30 pounds of, okay, empty. This is empty though, but I gotta fill it up. Mm. I'm walking to the, to the river. Fill this water oh, up. What are you doing? Woo, you take something. I'm tired of walking. I'm gonna drop, drop this down right. Woo, woo, my back. Woo, Lord, my back. I'm telling you, y'all better not invite me to no more of these beds no more with all this. All this water and stuff. Ooh, okay. All right. And what happened after that? Jesus said, Oh, oh okay. Y'all got to fill up the jar. Um, the verse says here, And the jars have been filled. He said, Dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. Service follows his instructions. <laughs> His soul, you're gonna need another dip after this. Okay, yeah, 
find it. Oh, okay. Let's put it in the world. Is it the is in the world? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, what is that? And so the servants follow his instructions. Then the master of ceremonies tasted the water that I made to wine. Uh, who would be my master of ceremonies? Uh, we need to have a little taste tester. Who, who master? Uh, Brother Ron, you want to be master of ceremonies? Uh, you want to taste, taste that real quick? Oh, okay, you're good. Oh, okay, oh, okay that, you think that good. I'm right here. He said, he, now he dipped some out and took it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water, that was now wine. He didn't know where it came from. But them servants did. They probably was like, mm, that was nasty. I don't want to be drinking that wine. It came from out of the. Don't you know we take baths and that stuff over there? That's nasty. Yeah, but he, he said it's good. I mean, now I know I went down to that river. That river in. It, it, I know that was clear. That was water. That had changed to something else. What? what? Uh, uh, y'all, y'all picturing this with me? Amen. Y'all picturing this with me? Yeah. And so he said, "All right." He called the groom. Yeah, y'all go yeah, do this real quick. Uh-huh. He feels a. Uh, he said. He brought it out. He said he called the groomsmen over. A host. Oh, he called, he called the groomsmen over. He's like, hey, yo, bro, taste this real quick. Yeah, yeah. David, taste this real quick. He just got married. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Let me taste that real quick. Mmm. 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 Mm. Mm. Okay. That's the good stuff. Right there. They said, they said, they said the host always served the best wine first. But y'all done flipped it on them. Y'all say the best for last. I just came by First Baptist Church this morning. I wanted to point this out to you guys. Is that number one, some of you may feel like that your life has been up and down, twists and turns, and everything else. But God has said, listen, your latter years shall be greater than your former years, and the best is yet to come. Oh, y'all didn't get excited about that. The best is yet to come for you. This does not end your life. This means that God is going, is preparing you. He has a plan for you. And there's things that he wants you to do in your life. He's preparing you for something greater. And those are some things in your life that even at, I don't care what age you're at, God says, I know the plan and you know the plan. I need you to work the plan. Why? Because I need you to just do it. Don't think about it no more. Oh, let me schedule and do this. Oh, let me plan to do that. Oh, I want to go back to school. I want to get my degree. I want to get my master's, my bachelor's, and everything else. God said, go do it. Go do it. Just do it. Your act of obedience is going to allow God to be able to bless you. It's going to allow him to be able to keep you. He's going to be able to make ways. If God is guiding, he's going to provide for you. Don't go down the rest of this year uh, and feeling defeated. You have the victory in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. God is wanted, wanted to encourage you guys on today. Because why? I want to make sure they fall over because I'm clumsy. I'm going to knock it over. <laughs> he said, he said, although 
you may be experiencing some heavy stuff in your life right now. But you may know somebody that's experiencing some heavy stuff in their life right now. But the Bible says this. The Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. Now, one thing that I learned about women, women are nurturers. Women, they receive. And a lot of times what happens with females is that the reason why you stay so stressed and worrisome is because you receive it, but you don't know how to release it. You have to know how to release the burdens. I was teaching some time ago. You know, they always say, you know, um, but if you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, where the loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So when you're praying for people, now if you're if you're a kind of person that pray for people, you have to understand that sometimes when you're praying for someone, you're binding yourself. Binding means you're putting you put it on you. You putting stuff on you. You're binding it to, because you want the person to be free. It's all right. I can take the burden. I can take the pain. I can take whatever it is that's holding you back. But sometimes what we do is we keep holding. So now you're bound with that same person's stuff that they're bound with. So what you're supposed to do is, number one, after you help pray for them and set them free, because... The Bible says this. The Bible says that when a spirit leaves a person, it goes out wandering. It goes out wandering. And if that same spirit comes back to you, who just got set free, it comes back seven times. So he's getting going to get some of his cousins, some of his friends. So this is the reason why a lot of people they get hooked on heroin, get hooked on other kind of drugs and stuff like that. And they get set free. They never get set free again. Why? Because now it's seven times greater than what it was before. So we have to learn how to, when we are setting people free, because we need people to set free. We got family members that need to be set free, right? Mm -hmm. If we don't, if we don't need, we, I mean, I need to be set free, but I mean, you know, hey, somebody else might come along there and help set me free. I might be bound. I may be bound. Because I'm a preacher doesn't mean that I don't go through problems. Amen? Amen. We all human. We all go through stuff. Everybody needs a prayer. A prayer partner. Somebody say, hey, Sister Wendy, I got you. Pray for you. But you buying all this stuff up. But you got to know how to let it go. So that's what the Bible says. Cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares. That means not you. Give it to Jesus. Okay, God, you got that. You got this. I'm giving this to you. I can't take, definitely can't take that no more. All right, that, all right, I'm, I'm free. You have to know how to let it go. Just let it go. It's stuff that we need to be doing in the body of Christ. And, and God is saying right now, just do it. What are your dreams? What are your goals? What are your aspirations? that you want to do in your life, just do it. What are some of the things, you know, hey, some of you guys here, you, you, you've already reached retirement age and, and everything else, and you it's like, well, you know, hey, I, I want to, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, you may want to go buy a house, you may want to go. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.